Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back to week 30 of the new Build Your Stash and Craft. Today we are going to make what I call wax color and um, it is made with this gel pomade and I got this at Walmart and I mean, I've made this before, a long time ago we made it in our first series, but it is something that I thought was really worth doing again for everyone who's new because it's just a really fun thing to play with. So, um, what we did was we purchased this and we purchased gel food coloring and some little containers to put it in. Now, these containers are way too big for how much you're going to put into each one. So, I have one here that already has some in it and you get it mixed up and it's got about you know just oh maybe a quarter of the bottom or something this goes a really long way so um oh and the one thing that you're probably going to want to do which i did not do and i forgot to bring out this time is um wear gloves when you do it because is when you're first mixing it up and everything it can get quite messy on your hands so otherwise make sure that you've got something to wipe your hands on which I'm going to grab a couple paper towels right now because I'm going to need them. Paper towels, napkins, Kleenex, whatever you have around the house. And so I've already done the red, orange, yellow, green, blue. So we're going to do purple and I'm also going to do brown. Um, and so you just take some of your wax from the jar And, you know, I just take out a scoop. And depending on, this is kind of a bit of a bigger scoop than some of the others. Because I'm going to do this one brown. And I really l like brown. And so I want to have a little bit more of that. So, and I'm just using a plastic knife. You can use anything that you have to get your colors out of um, the containers. So you're just going to take some of your... Um, food coloring so we we need to make purple so I'm going to take a little bit of blue and you don't need a lot you can always add more later so I'm just going to put some blue in here and then I'm going to just try and wipe as much onto that wax as I can because I'm going to wipe this off and get the red before I mix it up and this is why you want to Make sure that you have some gloves on. And we do have gloves in the series, so I meant to grab them and I forgot. Yesterday, I pretty much had tie-dyed hands most of the day. So I've got some red and I've got some blue. And so I'm just going to put those in there and just mix them up. Now, you can use any container to mix them in. Um, that you have that's uh, not a food container. But... um. The other thing is, is that if you have the little tiny snap top containers, this doesn't dry out really because it's gel. Um, even my sponges that I use for it don't dry out. So, um, you know, so I know that it stays gel like, although once you get it on your paper and it soaks in and you get it wiped off and I heat set it, um, I don't know that you really would have to, but I just do. Um, and so once you do that, it's dry on your paper, but it stays nice and waxy until you use it and get it on some paper. Now this is, would not work more than likely, it's not going to work like on plastic or anything like that. It is made to color paper and, you know, things like that. You could use it to to color fabric with but there we go now we have purple I'm wondering what color purple we have and so we're going to grab a piece of sponge which I thought I had some already cut here here's one right here so we're just going to grab a piece of sponge we're also going to make mamagami paper today um I have been seeing this all over um um, on YouTube lately and it's just something that's really fun to do and what's really kind of funny is it's an old Japanese technique and I didn't know that but when I was a kid I used to um, do this in church 
Don't tell anybody. But when I was little, you know, they only had the nursery. You could only go to the nursery till you were like three or something. So, you know, mom, mom and dad would give us a piece of gum. And I would always do this to the wrapper of the gum. So I didn't know it was something then, but I know it's something now. So I'm just going to grab a piece of paper. And I'm just going to start with a, I've got a dictionary page here. So we're going to see what color purple this is. Now, this is this could have a little bit of extra red or blue um, on the knife, um, you know, as we were mixing it. But it's pretty much going to be our color. And so we're just going to spread it on there. You're going to want to make sure that you have something underneath that, because I like to just wipe it right off the edge. You don't have to. You can just, you know, go and wipe it in the middle if you want to like this. But I always just like to do this if I'm trying to color the whole page, actually. Um, you know, you can use it you with stencils and all of that type of thing. So, but if you're wiping it off the page, make sure that you have something to grab what's extra. So there we go. This is what our purple is going to look like. And so there we have it. That is our purple. Now, I did do all of the colors on the page that I, oh, here it is. So I originally did the red, the yellow, and the blue. And then when I put the red down, I just went over part of it with the yellow when I put the yellow down to make orange because these blend really well together. So I had done red and I had done yellow and blue. And so when I did the red, I did, it was this wide, and then when I did the yellow, I just went up onto the red and got my orange. And so then I had my yellow was this wide, so when I did the blue, I just went up onto the yellow and made some green. So, and the purple, I just took what was left of the red on my sponge and put it down here and put a little of the blue on top. So you can blend all of these colors, and then this is the orange that I made, and this is the green that I made. So, you know, if you don't want to make all of the colors, you can blend them together. But you're going to want a sponge to use to blend them together because you don't want to get, um, like, you don't want to get blue wax on your yellow sponge when you're making green. So that is um, what I did there. But then I wanted to make the actual colors. So here is our purple. So that is, that's how you make the colors. They're just so easy. Now I want to make, I want to make a brown too. I'm not sure that I made brown before. Um, and so just trying to think and I really don't think I do I know that I had the same um, the same uh, gel food coloring but I just don't know that I made brown but I'm hoping that so there we go there we go I'm just going to kind of just run this around the edge to open this up a little bit because I can't get that I tried peeling off the silver but I couldn't peel it off and so I'm just going to take some brown out of here. I'm going to kind of put it on the edge because I'm thinking I didn't really get enough. And I don't want to really put that wax into my food coloring. There, that should probably be enough. Um, yeah, I don't want to put my knife in here and then put it back in the food coloring without wiping it really well because I don't want to get this in there and contaminate that because we may use it for something else. Not cooking, I never mix anything um, from the kitchen. I never mix that with things from my art room because you just don't wanna cross contaminate things and maybe have a problem. So there we go. And I'm hoping that this gives me like a tea dye look so that if I need some tea dye paper and I don't have time to dye it and let it dry, I can go ahead and just use this in its place. So we're going to see what this looks like. This is actually really quite exciting to me because I wasn't sure. Sorry about the dogs. Most of you said they didn't bother you last time, so I forgot to shut the door. And so it's wrestling time, I guess. They're kind of like kids, you know, you get on the phone or you get doing a video or something and it's, you know, they just have to 
try and get your attention. Well, they really are our kids because our girls are grown, so they are our new children. Of course, we've always had dogs and they've always been part of the family. That's just the way we look at it. So I'm gonna set this on here for a second. Now these containers are fine. Um, you know, they just take up some space. So if you have smaller containers, that might be even nicer. Um, let me grab my other sponge here. And just find my scissors. And cut off a piece for this. And they don't have to be this big. They can be any size, or they could be bigger. They can be any size that you want them to be. I just figured this would sit nicely on top. So I'm gonna just, and I do like the fact that it's got this hard, you know, scrubby bit on the top, because it makes it easy to hang on to. And it does help you keep your hands a little cleaner. So let's see what this is gonna do. This is really kind of exciting. And it's really, really light. I'm thinking because I put so much um, because I put so much of the wax in there because I wanted to make extra. But it's not as dark as I want it to be. So this is the color that we get. But I want it a little darker, so I'm going to put some more in there. I'm just going to Wipe this off good so that I don't get it. And my food coloring. Whoa, might be a little too much. And that's the thing, you can always add more, but you can't take away. So take your time when you're doing it so that your color doesn't get way too dark. Now they always look darker in the bowl a lot darker than what you're going to see once you spread it out on your paper. So remember that if you look at it and go, oh my gosh, it's way too dark. Don't worry about it till you try it. And then if it's too dark, you can add some more wax to it. That will lighten it up a little bit. Or you may just have to make a new batch and make it lighter because you might have to add, depending on how dark you got it, you may have to add way too much wax. And like I said, this goes a really long way, so you don't necessarily want to um, make a huge, huge amount of it. So here we go. Now we'll try this one. Hopefully it will be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna kind of go, I'm gonna go right here. And the dictionary pages are a little bit, a little bit shiny. So they actually don't take the color as much as a more, um, A more, I don't know what I want to say, papery kind of paper. So, I wonder if I have any just regular paper here. Let's see. Um, uh oh, here comes the boss. She's gonna holler at them now. Okay, so we did get it a little bit darker. And I think I like that color. Now, what you do with it, once you put it on your paper, then you wipe it off. So um, I usually try and, you know, really get it spread out. And then you just, you can use napkin, paper towel, anything that you have. Let me take a clean one because I don't want to Get that food coloring that's on the other one and then you're just gonna buff it and 
and once you get it buff, once I get it buffed off, um, then I normally heat set it. And so there we go. That's what we've got for color. And we'll just take the heat gun that we got. That heavy. We just heat set it. Now we've already buffed it off. Although I do still have some of it on the paper here. But we'll find a spot that's clean. So here's a spot that's clean. And now we're just going to, I'm gonna just show you that, see, it's still clean. So, and even once you get it buffed off really well, even if you don't heat set it, um, it, it doesn't really come off that well once you've really like just basically wiped it off. So there we go. I like the looks of this. It's kind of hard to really see with the purple, but that looks really cool compared to, Let's see, I've got another one here. So there we go, there's our difference. So isn't that, it's just very awesome and it really feels good. On some things it might smear your black a little bit. Um, you know, I haven't ever had it do it really bad, but it would depend on how it was printed um, as to what it might do with that. But so, that is, that is what we do with our wax paints. That's how you make them. It's just that simple. I did all the others ahead of time because it just made it easier um, time-wise because I wanted to show you that. I'm going to show you the Mamagami, which is basically, um, what do they say? They say it's like fabric paper or something like that. And basically, it's just crumpled up paper that becomes very soft like fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece out of here there, so I don't get of course I've got a little on my hands now um, on some of them they get their paper wet with they put oil on their hands some of them some of them put things on their paper um, I tend to just sit at my chair and just um, now this one, I made the Mamagami paper, and then I put the color on it afterwards. So, but you could put the color on it ahead of time. This one I used a little bit of wax color while I was scrunching the paper. And so, but this is what Mama, see how floaty and light that is like fabric so if you have some paper that you want to put on a fabric project and you think but it's so stiff and hard you can do this with it now this is so see there's really not any crunch or crinkle to it um, it's because it's got the wax on there and because it has been um, made tighter or scrunched okay that's enough um, for quite a while. Now, the one thing I noticed was the dictionary pages work great for this. So, um, and that is, I think that they're just made stronger. I find that they don't rip as well. Now, this one I did rip when I was, um, putting this on here and, you know, because it is going to still be a delicate paper, but it kind of makes it a little bit stronger. Not really, not really, but um, it's just, it's fun to play with. It has a whole different texture to it. So you go from, you just take a piece of, a piece of paper, any kind of paper. Like I said, when I was a kid, I did this with the paper wrappers off of a piece, a stick of the gum. And I would just sit at church and I would just crinkle it and open it, crinkle it and open it. And I didn't know I was doing Mama Gummy, but I guess that I was. But so you start with just a regular piece of paper. You can put lotion on your hands or whatever, which helps soften it up. Um, some people put vegetable oil on it. And so, you know, you can put some of this oil on it. Um, 
we can even do it with one of these. See, now this has the oil on it already. So you just take it and crunch it. And basically, Mama Gummy, I guess, means paper kneading. So you're just kneading the paper, and then you open it up and just do it again. Now, I tried twisting it, which kind of works okay, but I find that because when you do that, it's hard to get it untwisted without ripping it, especially depending on what the paper is. So I more do kind of knead it like I would knead dough, but since it's so small, I'm doing it in my hands. But you just kind of press and, you know, just kind of press and move, and then open it up and put it back together until it gets really, really soft like this. So, but you know, um, this is something that I find when I'm watching TV. Um, it's something that I can do with my hands. I love projects that I can do when I'm sitting down and, you know, just watching TV or something because I have a hard time just sitting there. So, you know, this is just something that's fun to do. I usually kind of get it to about this stage at least. Um, before I sit down to watch TV, I'll have some of them that are just started like this. So that when we're sitting there watching the TV, my husband and I, I'm not doing this. I'm only doing this, which is much quieter and not quite as annoying. So, but yeah, you go from that kind of a sound, which has only been, you know, now crinkled twice. To, we've done this one a few times to that this one I've worked on for a little while it's not quite done yet and then we've got this one that I consider to be completely done and so that's the difference between the regular paper and the mamagami paper so it is just, it's just a fun thing to do. And so then, well, what can you do with them? You can use them like any other kind of paper. And so I thought we would maybe just use some to quickly make a card. I wasn't really planning on using this piece, but now normally, you know, you're going to sit and you're going to do this for a little while. Um, like I said, I might sit and do one piece of paper for a half an hour to an hour. Um, because really, it's just something to do. And so, you know, it doesn't have to, you know, there there's not a perfectness to it. it I think you kind of get to a point. When you get to this point, I don't think that needing it any longer is going to make it any softer. So, um... You know, so I think that there is a point where basically it's done. But it does take a while to get, see, because you can still hear this one. And, you know, this one, you really can't. So there is kind of a, a, a point where it's actually done. And so this, and this has the wax on it just like this had color wax on it also. So, and this was one of my old color waxes. Um, and I just put it on there lightly because I really wasn't sure if I put it on there heavy, how bad that would be. Um, you know, I didn't know maybe that would make it rip or something. But this one, I put it on full strength and wiped it off. And it's, you know, it's still nice and sturdy. And like I said, if you have a dictionary, the dictionary pages work great. I'm wondering if possibly encyclopedias might be better also. And, you know, just because those are books that are made to go through over and over and over again, so they maybe make the paper stronger, whereas a book that you're just buying to read, um, that book, you know, it's going to be read a few times maybe, but... Um, you know, it's not it's not going to be flipped through constantly. And, you know, like when you're looking through a dictionary, you're flipping through the pages, you know, trying to find the right spot. So, um, you know, I'm thinking they're just a little bit stronger because I find them so much easier to work with. And I love dictionary pages to use in my art because, you know, they're dictionary pages. So, you know, it's, it's not like you're going to find that there's, you know, something really bad on that page. I mean, they do have all words in there, but, um, you know, there's not going to be, you know, some kind of a, a scene that you don't, somebody could still read and you don't want that on your project. 
at least with the dictionary, it's it's a dictionary, so you know. So there we go. Now we have this one. It still has just a touch of sound to it. A little more than this, but really not much. So that is how you do Mamagami. And, you know, I'm interested to see what you think of that. Because when I saw it, I was like, well, what is it? I thought maybe it was something like origami or whatever. And... I was just amazed, you know, at the, you know, the different ways people were doing it and that type of thing. And, and I thought, well, I've been doing that, you know, and I've even done it before just, just sitting and messing around because like I said, I need to do something with my hands, but I remember doing it quite often when I was younger because it was something to do. And after that first, you had to be very slow when you first started to crinkle it up you know, because you didn't want to make a whole bunch of noise in church. But, um, you know, so you'd crinkle it up really slow and then you'd open it and then you'd crinkle it really slow and open it. And eventually it would get to the point where you could crinkle it right up and it wasn't making noise anymore. And so, you know, it was just something fun to do. I didn't do anything with them. Um, I probably threw them away when I left. I don't really know. But there we go. So, there's Mamagami, and there are our wax colors. I just think that they are so awesome. I love them, and actually, I really like the brown. I'm going to be using that at different times, but, and I think that this is just really, really cool. Now, see, here's a little hole, and I just did that hole, and I said, oh, and they're pretty strong, and I did that, and I put that little hole in it. So it's actually not as strong as it would be originally because um, you've broken up all those fibers. And um, when you like use the wax on a regular dictionary page, it doesn't soak through really bad. But this one I had already mamagami before I put the wax on it. And so when I put the wax on this one, it really did soak through. Um... And, um, you know, because we'd broken those fibers and basically put little tiny holes in our paper, and so that was it was able to soak through easily on the Mamagami paper. So, but I just thought, here's another one that I did. This was a, a music book that I did. And so I thought we would just take a piece of the paper. This is a piece of the paper that we did the roller stamps. And um, after we did the roller stamps, I went ahead and put my sponge into the water and dyed a bunch of paper and I rolled a bunch of them prior to and then dyed those papers and so I'm going to use this to make a little card so this is just our regular paper and because I don't want it to be really wet I'm just going to let me just do this just going to kind of tap it. Just kind of tap it on our sponge. Pee wee, no. And put that just like that. It just kind of holds it together. It makes it a little bit more sturdy. You don't have to do that when you make a card. I just like to do that if I can do it with a dry type glue. I don't like doing it with wet glue because it makes it wrinkle all up. Of course, this has um, this has texture to it anyway, so I didn't even get any glue on that spot. And if your glue seems to be getting super sticky, um, you can just give it a spray with some water. And then you should really probably try and store them upside down so the side that you want to use has more glue on it than is on the bottom so i just thought so we've got this piece of paper and it's still nice you can put a sentiment in right inside so what we're going to do is just take a piece of the mamagami paper and i thought this music paper was pretty so i'm just going to say here to here and so I'm just going to, let me see, the piece that you pull toward you is the piece that does not get the white edge. Yes. I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to go around the straight edges too. That's why I kind of measured the same size 
as what my card was because I knew I was going to go around these edges and um, so I needed to have a little bit to rip off that wasn't just super fine. I find it easier to rip off about a half an inch or so versus, you know, trying to rip off just a little tiny bit. And I'm lazy. And now I can actually use those strips to make something else. This is a little too wide down here, I think. Okay, and I need to thin it, make it just a little bit thinner. It's a little too wide. I like that. Yes, that looks very good. And then, I think, yeah. I thought that I would put these on here. Yeah, I like the way that that looks. I'm just gonna use tacky glue to put it all on. I do want to make sure and I'm not going to go right out to the edges I want the edges to be a little bit floppy so I'm just going to kind of put it in the middle And it just has a nice kind of aged look to it, too, with all the wrinkles in there. I just like that. And then, do we want it like this? Or, no, I think I like him up there. I think that that's how I like it. So I'm going to go just out from the body. Whoa, that's a lot. Again, I'm not going to glue down. Oh, man. I'm going to glue down all of the wing, just kind of next to the body, like that. And, and this, again, is done with the wax colors. I made the Mamagami paper. And then I put the wax colors on it afterwards because I hadn't thought about it beforehand. So there we go. Now it's time to like look through a magazine or a book or something and find a really cute little saying that I might want to put on here. And, um, and just maybe even take another piece of our mamagami and just find a word that would fit on here like this and then just like put this up here there was something that says smile or love or or whatever I find that I think is a good word to put on here so I really like the way that that turned out too so, and that's using some of the things, some of the papers that we've made, the roller stamps that we made, the butterflies and the dragonflies that we made, and again, the mamagami that we made today, even though we didn't make this piece today, um, and the wax colors that we made. So, if you, um, if you want to find any of these, um, just go on to Build Your Stash and Craft, the new Build Your Stash and Craft, and these things will be the paper will be on there and the butterflies. We just did these recently. Paper we did a little while ago and it was making, we were making roller stamps to make this paper. So there we go. I hope that you enjoyed this project. I think that it's really fun. I think that the Mamagami is really fun. And um, you can get so many colors. And again, you can blend them. So you don't have to even make every single color. 
you can make whatever colors you want. You can use the wax color before you do the mamagami or after you do, or yes, after you make the mamagami. But here are the colors that we made. And I just find this really a fun thing to do. And I love using the wax colors because they just give you a different look. And you can glue to them. I've never had a problem gluing to them. Once you buff them off, you know, they're pretty much, you know, the paper is dry and there's nothing there to wipe off anymore. And the glue sticks to it. And I believe that... Um, Certain pens will write on it, some pens won't, um, but I do think that most of them kind of will, or pencils or that type of thing. So there we go. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I really love making these. If you make them, I would love to hear your comments on what you think of them. So thank you for stopping by. I really do appreciate each and every one of you, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.